Sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I'm here with another out of the park game, and this one's going to be an interesting one. This is going to have an in, take an interesting twist on the theme, because today myself and Chris Dufour will actually be playing for our opponent. I will be managing the, the White Sox. And as I, man, I said in a, uh, a previous video, there was a team added by the computer with make-believe players called the um, San Francisco Red Flash. And that's the team that my White Sox are playing today. Uh, but since it had make-believe players on it, didn't have real, it's not a real, um, a, a good um American League team from the past, like every other team in the league is. Since it wasn't, it had make-believe players on it, I decided to make two of the make-believe players into me and uh, my good buddy Chris Dufour, who has played as the opposing manager in many of my round-robin tournament games near the end of the tournament in, the, um, in both the NLCS and the World Series. So uh, Chris is an outfielder for the Red Flash and I will be the starting pitcher today as you can see on the screen. Um, my starter is Freddy Garcia from the 2005 White Sox. That's the team that I'm managing which is currently 14 and 11 on the year and in third place and if we scroll down we can see that the uh, Red Flash are 9 and 16, tied with the 1987 Minnesota Twins, who, if you ask me, really weren't that good anyway. I don't know how that team made it to the World Series. But anyway, um, and really won it. I think they even won the World Series. So anyway, we are going to be playing the Red Flash. Now, let's take a look at me. Just, there, there I am with my a picture that I try to make it look as much like me as possible. Um, number 66, if you know me, I was born in 1966 and I always get 66 on my customized jerseys, which I have not bought in many years. So if my wife happens to be watching this, don't get mad. I did not buy another jersey. But anyway, you can see um, down here I'm unhappy. That's probably because I'm only making $51,920 as a starting pitcher in the major leagues, but um, I digress. So uh, health status is okay. And my personality, I'm well liked. So let's take a look at uh, the Red Flash team and go to Chris Dufour's page. Oh, and by the way, I have a 611 earned run average on the year. I'm 0 and 1 with a 611 earned run average. So that isn't good either. And not at all. So here is Chris Dufour. We'll bring him up. You see, he's making far more than I'm making. Maybe he deserves it. Who knows, but he's making $106,200. Um, and he is, morale is good. See, I'm, I'm unhappy, but his morale is right up there. And not a lot of fire in the belly. So, I mean, I guess he's not really, doesn't take this seriously. And you can see by the uh, statistics that maybe that's the case because right now he's hitting 238 for the red flash with a 313 on base percentage, but a 548 slugging percentage and an 860 OPS because he has three doubles, a triple and seven home runs in 99 plate appearances. So in uh, the interest of getting on, moving on with this, now that we have taken a good look at what Chris 
looks like in this game and what I look like in this game, we will move along, move along, move along to the actual game. And we are home. I uh, think that the lineup looks fine to me for what we've got. And if you saw the previous video where I introduced this league, you can see Tom Brenansky is on our team when, in fact, he was on the 1987 Twins. And that is because our general manager made a trade where he acquired Tom Brenansky for Scott Pizednik. I don't know if he gave up anyone else. I think he might have. I want to say he gave up. So, oh, he, um, Bobby Jenks. He traded Bobby Jenks and, um, and Bezednik for Bazan, for Brunansky. So he's on our team. So anyway, we will get on with this. I got to say, honestly, I hope my team does not score a lot of runs because I'm the one that's on the mound pitching against us. So uh, the red flash will be up first. We will be in the field. And so here we go. First batter is Nick Schmidt, the center fielder for the red flash. Again, you're not going to know Nick Schmidt because he's a made up player that the computer just made up. And uh, Freddie Garcia is getting ready to deal to him. So, that is going to be a fly out. Nick Schmidt is out. One down. That brings up Phil McWinney. The, the Phil McWinney. And he's going to ground out to third, looks like. So, there's two down really quickly. And now David Navarez is up. And if he gets out, we're not going to see Chris Dufour in the first inning. But he didn't. He hit it right up the middle. So let's see if Chris Dufour is up next. I didn't even take a look. And there he is. Chris Dufour, the right fielder for the vaunted San Francisco Red Flash. And he is going to ground out, it looks like, and he does. And so now I'm going to go out there for the red flash and take the mound. There you can see Zolke on the mound. There I am with my tiny little pitcher and my one, my one and, what is it, one and four record? Man. So anyway, I'm going to deal to uh, Tom Brenansky to lead it off. And I walk present. Ben Brunansky. And one of the things that is an issue for me, apparently, is that I walk a lot of people. But we're not worried about, uh, I mean, Brunansky isn't going to try to steal, so um, Paul Canerco is up. Batting against me with a man on, and he doubles down the line. Or, yes. And, of course, the shortstop is not going to throw home. He wants my ERA to skyrocket. I think I've explained that before. It's just the animation doesn't really adequately depict what, what happened. So, you know, that was a double with a runner, with the runner on first scoring, which happens, but they depicted it. They depict it, depict it very poorly. So, uh, Frank E. Thomas, Big Frank is up and I walk him. So really I have not gotten anyone out. Hopefully the manager sticks with me a little longer than he actually should. Now there's a ground out into not a double play, no. So runners are at the corners with one down and Aaron Rowan is up. And Aaron Rowan, maybe that's a double play, no. So two runs come across for us in the first inning. And uh, Joe Creedy, Joe Creedy is up and he is going to hit a home run. So I'm not going to be in this game very long. All right. I hope you got a good look at me because it does not seem as though I'm going to pitch very long with the way this is going. Przinsky up at the plate and I maybe get Przinsky. No, no. The first baseman throws me the ball and I drop it. It's an error on me. I mean, this is just really 
the manager's got to be saying, why am I still sitting on my butt watching him pitch? Yeah, this is bad. This is bad stuff right here. All right, so now we got Willie Harris up, the ninth hitter, and he and he walks. So, Tom Bernan, we're back to Bernanski. And he's going to fly out, but not before we got four runs off me. And it's 4 nothing. And so here is Kenny Richard, the second baseman, who looks a lot like me. Except that my beard is brown and his is a little got a little gray in it. And so does mine, actually, in real life. Mario Arroyo is up at the plate. The Mario Arroyo, and that is an out. So there's two down, quickly. Up steps Omar Gutierrez. And he is going to hit the ball deep, but on a fly out. And the San Francisco Red Flash are still down 4 nothing. I am still out on the mound, now dealing to Canerco again for the second time. And Canerco is going to hit a home run. Yeah, I'm not really... I mean, this is bad even by my standards, I want to say. And there's another there's another base hit they're just uh, they're dragging me all over the field so uh yeah and uh, now carl everett up at the plate he did not believe that the dinosaurs actually existed we did get a force at second it's five nothing two runners on no we didn't get the force at second because the second baseman dropped the ball this is a terrible team i mean it, I'm not helping, but this is really a terrible team. So anyway, Dufour gets the ball in quickly. My man Dufour get the ball in quickly, but not quickly enough. And now you can see um, that there is a new pitcher, Brian Plain. Brian Plain has come in to relieve me in the second inning. So I only went one. All those runs are like six runs and uh, in like one one real inning pitched, one credited inning pitched. And he deals to the next guy. And so now we've got Juan Uribe is up at the plate. And so now I'm just rooting for my White Sox to win the game because we got an 8 nothing lead and I'm already in the shower. So here we go. Melvin Olivares, the catcher, is up at the plate for the red flash and walking. Freddy Garcia, not even the least bit tired. And they decide not to turn the double play. And here's Nick Schmidt. We're back to the top of the order against Freddy Garcia. It only took the Red, or it only took the White Sox within the first inning, I think, to get back to the top of the order. Nick McQuinney, two down. We got a little stolen base action going on. And McQuinney still at the plate with Nick Schmidt having taken second. And that's going to be a base hit. It looks like they're going to get a run. The red flash strikes for a run, but it's 8-1. to one. And uh, David Navarez is, is up. And he strikes out. So that is going to be it for the red flash. They're down, and then Brian Plain goes back out to the mound. I mean, I didn't even help our bullpen, you know, like... I could have gone five really crappy innings, at least, and saved the bullpen, but they, the manager figured the game has to end at some point, some point during the same day that it started. So um, he had to get me out of there. So we got a double play, and that's, yeah. So, the red flash is back up with Chris Dufour against Freddy Garcia. 
And he goes right up the middle. The base hit. He's one for two. Up steps Kenny Richard. Kenny Richard is going to hit into a... No, not a double play. Kenny Richard beat it out on the back end, mainly because the second baseman decided not to throw it. And now we have a possible double play. Yes. So that is, we have an eight to one lead, the White Sox do. And we are up at the plate with Frank Thomas, big Frank batting against Brian Plain, who's out there for his third inning of work right now. And he is not, he doesn't seem to be losing his gas either. He's got a lot in the tank still. Oh, there's an error though on the second baseman or the first baseman. So that'll allow us to have a guy at second. Aaron Rowan up. And he's going to hit it down the line. We are just, we're spanking this uh, red flash team. It's crazy. Nine to one now. Joe Creedy up at the plate. Creedy just hits it right past the shortstop. I'm going to send the runner because, I mean, we're playing with house money. And that's a score. That's 10 to one. And also, I wasn't batting against my side. We were, you know, I'm already um, probably back at the hotel making travel arrangements for Triple A. So, uh, Brian Plain is still out there dealing, and he gets gets us out. So that's it in that inning. That we're going to the top of the fifth, headed to the top of the fifth with Chicago ahead ten to one, and that brings up uh, somebody for the Red Flash. Don't know. I didn't catch the name, but he's out. Gutierrez. And so now Olivares is up with one down. Got nice uniforms. They look, they kind of remind me of USC, the USC uh, Trojans. But uh, they are not nearly as good. In fact, in fact, the USC football team is probably better at baseball than this team is. So that's a strikeout, sends him back to the bench. And... Uh, so Brian Plain's back out there, and Willie Harris is going to face him in the bottom of the fifth to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Willie Harris takes it up the middle. This is a ton of hits, man. This is crazy. I, I can't wait to see the box score on this one. Brnanski, here he is, the man that we traded to get from the 87 Twins, and he rips a hit to the opposite field. Two runners on. No outs. Brian Plain getting his butt handed to him. And we got a Canerco sighting going up the middle. Canerco has been a fire in our face. Or really not a fire in our face because I'm the manager of this team. But and that's going to be a hit up the middle. Uh, so that's going to be two more runs. Maybe no, just one. Just one. We want to take it easy. I think everybody in this White Sox lineup now has a hit. Carl Everett, the man who doesn't believe in dinosaurs, hits it into the gap, double. It's maybe a triple. It's going to be a triple for Carl Everett. How much? How many times did you see that happen in 2005? So it is 14 to 1. 14 to 1. So another another base hit. Uh, this team is crazy bad. How did they win nine games up to this point? All right, Dennis Dennis Cook is on in relief, and he gives up a dong. So that's going to be another uh, three three runs maybe. Yeah, yeah, seventeen to one. Seventeen to one. We're not even in the sixth inning yet. So we've got, uh, yeah, Dennis Cook dealing to Przinsky. AJ. AJ Przinsky is going to fly out. 
mercifully, that's the first out of this inning. And so now we have Juan Uribe up. He's one for three on the day. Like I said, I doubt there's any White Sox player without a hit right now. And he flies out. I think the White Sox are just getting tired of hitting. They were, they're like, we want to go back in the field. One for two, Willie Harris steps up. And he is out. So Nick Schmidt is up at the plate against Garcia. He strikes out. McQuinney, McQuin, McQuinney, I, I don't know. And he's going to be out. So here comes the third batter. And that is David Navarez, who's one for two on the day. And he is going to be out. He grounds right down to Canerico, and Canerico makes the play unassisted. 17-1, bottom of the sixth inning. Brenanski is up. Brenanski is going to ground out to third. So here is Paul Canerico, who's three for four with a home run and two RBIs today. That guy is having a day. And he is going to pop up to first base. And so he is out. That's two down. And here's Frank Thomas, who is two for three on the day with an RBI. And he's out. So that might be the first zero inning that the White Sox have had. And that brings up Freddie Garcia on the mound, still out there. And he's not even really starting to get gassed yet. Although I have to try to remember that I'm in charge of Freddie Garcia and when he leaves the game. But it is a seventh inning and he's really not gassed because this team hasn't done anything. Jordan Love is a pinch hitter for Doof. Why are they pinch hitting for the Doof man? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's what just happened. So that brings up Kenny Ray. It is unbelievable. You do not pinch hit for a guy with an 800 OPS. Maybe that's part of this team's problem. So uh, we've got Mario Arroyo, the DH. And the, he is going to fly out to right field. So we've got Dennis Cook still on the mound. He's not, uh, he hasn't been gashed yet. He's still got some in the tank. And uh, Carl Everett is batting against him and he'll fly out. We know he did, he tripled last time he was up. And that brings Aaron Rowan and he's three for four. Aaron Rowan is three for four. Come on. So that is going to be, that's going to get down. And uh, Joe Creedy at the plate. They walk Joe Creedy. You know what? I may just let Garcia go the entire game, even if he gets gassed. Because, and if you and, and you've heard me talk about it before, when a pitcher gets tired in this game, they almost don't make any outs. So I'm going to hold up and. Um, Uribe up with the bases loaded and one out. And that is a double play. So they get out without giving up any more. But really, and I mean, if you look at Garcia, he's really not even close to being gassed yet. And we're in the eighth inning. So, I mean, he's not even going to get to that point. Because the red flash is just... Uh, their, their chances of winning this game went by as quickly as a red flash. So now they uh, there's a double down the line. They're going to have a guy on. Guy on second, one out. And John Kalen is up at the plate. I, I think he's probably just putting in his... You know what? That's what he's probably doing. The game is out of reach, so he's just putting in everybody off the bench come in except Nick Schmidt Nick Schmidt is still out there giving it the old college try and he is going to ground out to th third base 
and we go to the bottom of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth, Willie Harris up against Dennis Cook is still out there. Who is this guy? Iron Man Dennis Cook. Is this the is that the real life Dennis Cook? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out after the game. Tom Bernanski up the plate, man on, no outs. And he's gonna pop out to second base. One down. That brings up Wilfredo Cat. Castro. Yeah, that's definitely what this Red Flash manager is doing. He knows he's going to lose this game for sure. And so he's just playing everybody. And how is Will Fredo? Wasn't that an out? Oh, no, that he's, that's the, uh, he's the pitcher. Right. I am going <clears> to <throat> try to send the man, and he does score. It's 18 to 1. <clears throat> Good game. Carl Everett up. Carl Everett lacing one to center field. Another base hit for the man. Might put a dinosaur in his locker. Aaron Rowan is up at the plate with two on and two out, and he strikes out. So they get out of that inning. It is the top of the ninth. You can see Garcia is not tired yet, not at all, not even in the least. So he's going to get a complete game out of this. And that's a great diving catch by Rowan. He can't even give them a hit, a token hit. David Navarez is up. And he's going to ground out. And Jordan Love. Isn't Jordan Love the quarterback of the, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, anyway, he is up at the plate. And really, how what could it hurt to grab a football player and say, why don't you tie your hand at baseball for our team? And then uh, Kevin, Kenny Richard, Kenny Richard, man on, two down, and he is out. Or no, he walks. Garcia walked him. And so Mario Arroyo, the DH, up at the plate, and he is out. And that should finally be it. And it is. We win it 18 to 1. So let's see what my ERA ballooned to. First of all, we've got Doof was 1 for 2. And, uh, yeah, I pitched one inning. I allowed six earned runs on six hits. Eight runs overall, but only six were earned. Walk three, and now I have a 776 earned run average. And if I was unhappy, now let's see if Dennis Cook is the real Dennis Cook uh, relief pitcher that actually existed. He is. That is the actual Dennis Cook. So, yeah. And I didn't know he was any kind of an Iron Man, but apparently he was. So let's return to the game. Um and the stats and of course we've got a lot of uh, awards for this game hit machine slug fast touch the plate yeah all that stuff so let's go to the uh, let's go to the standings and you can see we've got I've got the White Sox at 15 and 11 we're only five games behind the 2001 Seattle Mariners and only two games behind the 1970 Orioles. The Red Flash, however, 9-17. and 17. And again, I don't know how that team won nine games. But anyway, that's going to be it for me. That's all I got. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.